Hi, and welcome to my math class. Today we are still discussing factorizing, but specifically we're discussing grouping. Now, in order to do grouping, you must be comfortable with the rules of taking out a common. Now, when you are doing grouping, you will notice that the questions are very different from the standard questions you've seen. Number one, there's usually no common to take out. Number two, it tends to be four terms more than your usual three terms to do trinomials or more than, or like example, your two terms to do difference of two squares. Right, let's take the following example, 4m minus 4n plus am minus an. Now, if you look at the entire question, you will notice there's no common. That's the first thing. The second thing, we can't do trinomials. It's not three terms. Neither can we do difference of two squares. Now, those are all your previous rules of factorizing that you should have went over in your previous videos or you should have seen in your previous videos. Please make sure you are comfortable with all the previous factorizing before continuing. Now, when we have a question that has no common or no trinomials, we do a concept called grouping. When we're grouping, we're grouping different terms and making it one term. But the most important thing is that when you are grouping, between the terms, you must have a plus. For this example, I would have 4m minus 4n plus, I am adding that plus. The plus that's in the question is with am. Right. So, first, when we grouping, you have to take out a plus. Now, it is a common mistake for pupils to not put this plus. Or, when they are grouping, they group very fast. So, what they do is they just circle the 4m minus 4n in the question and they go on. Now, if the middle term is a plus for your, and, and you're lucky, it's a plus, then you'll get it correct. But if that middle term is a minus, then everything you do would be incorrect. So it is better and safer to rewrite it and to put a clear plus between each group. So number one, we're going to group but you're going to remember your plus sign. Next, we're going to take out a common, as we had done in the previous video. Now, what is common in the first bracket? 4, leaving us with m minus n. Plus, what is common in the second bracket? a, leaving us with m minus n. When we're doing this, we are taking out a common from the group. Then you look at the bigger question and you take out a common again. But now you're taking out a common from the entire question. If you look, there are two terms. This is your first term and this is your second term. What is the same in each term? The entire bracket M minus N is the same. So if I take that out, m minus n, what am I left with? I'm left with a 4 plus a. Now you've completely factorized. You know you completely factorized because when you look at the answer, you will notice that the answer is one term. That's your first thing. That's the first thing you need to notice. Second, you need to notice that the powers of the unknowns are at the lowest it can be. If you look at this level, how do I know I am not done completely? How do I know I have not completely factorized? Because at this level, there are still two terms. So I'm not done. You have to continue factorizing till you reach a point where it is one term until you know that you have reached the lowest power. Let us do the following example. a squared b 
minus a squared d minus p squared b plus p squared d. Now, if you look at the entire question, there is no common. Number two, it is not a trinomial or difference of two squares. So what I'm going to do is group. Now, how do I decide what to group? If I look at each term in the expression, I will notice that in the first two terms, I got a squared. That's the same. In the third and fourth term, I got p squared. That's the same. Now, when I am grouping, I am going to rewrite it. So I'm going to have a squared b minus a squared d. That's my first group. But look, I'm putting a plus. And then when I'm grouping the second group, this minus is part of the p squared b. So I need to write it in the second bracket. Minus p squared b plus p squared d. It is important, again, I'm emphasizing that when you group, you put a plus. If you had taken a minus there, then this p squared d would be incorrect because that minus would have made this positive a minus and then we've changed the original question. Right. The next step is to take out a common from each group. In the first group, we've got a squared and we're left with b minus d. In the second group, I'm going to take out a minus p squared. Now, when you take out a minus, when you take out a minus, the signs change, which means that this would become b minus d. Let's do it a different way, just on the side so you can understand. If I'm working with the second bracket, which is minus p squared b plus p squared d. Let's say you've seen that p squared is a common. So you're left with minus b plus d. But when we have a minus b plus d, if you look at your first bracket, the signs are different. So what we're doing is we're taking out a negative as a common, like how you would take out negative 1. But as soon as I take out a negative, then this becomes b minus d. Now if you had to do the simplifying rule and take it in, multiply minus p squared with b, I will get minus p squared b. If I say minus p squared times negative d, I will get positive p squared d. Going back to our question, now we have two terms. What is common in the two terms? B minus D. What is left? A squared minus P squared. How do we check if we're done? Number one, I have one term, which is fine. But are my powers at the lowest? Are my powers at the lowest that it can go? If you look at the first bracket, b minus d, it is. But a squared minus p squared, you can continue. That is difference of two squares, which will be a minus p, a plus p. Now you've completely factorized. If in the exams, they tell you to completely factorize and you stop at this level, you would lose marks because you haven't answered the question completely. You have to go on as far as possible. Now, if you had done grouping by number one, you group, then you take out a common and you take out a, uh, a second common. You have to always pre-check your pre-knowledge. You need to know, can I factorize further? Can I take out a common again? Can I maybe do difference of two squares? Can I do trinomials? 
when you factorizing you have to consistently go through the checklist thank you for watching